I'm Ben Pearson and this video is about the cars that got away in the pursuits. They want a lot, they want, they want a lot. <laughs> ones that got away, this is a, a, a touchy subject really because you don't want to admit the ones that got away. It's always the day that you mucked up on or the time when you're out with your mates and you, you had three beers and you passed out because it all went wrong that night. So you don't really want to talk too much about the ones that got away. In your head, you can't really remember the ones that got away too well because you remember the good jobs, you remember all the the, the, the good pursuits. Um, and they've got away for a reason. They haven't got away because they're a better driver. Um, they've got away because they've got no fear. And that's a massive, massive thing to decide when you're in a pursuit. If that person's switched on and can drive, that person switched on can drive and he's got no fear, or that person that can't drive for shit and he's got no fear. That's the most dangerous thing you can be looking at. There's three that really stick in my mind. One of them is the BMW M140 that was stolen in a burglary. We dropped on it in Manningham. A lot of, a lot of pursuits cars dropped on it in Manningham. And we were all behind it at one point, but it was sort of like doing these big laps around the area. But from hitting a junction, turning left and flooring it, we could just keep up. But then on the corner, he couldn't get away from us. So he slowed right down. We were all over roads. We catch right up on the corner. We're right behind him. As soon as he's gone, straight flood it. And he, and he, he would gain that much ground. But the, the, re the reason he get away, because he just blitzed junctions. And you've got to think about that person coming through the other side of that junction at that time. Mrs. Miggins collecting the shopping. She's, she's been with Barbara and she's been at Garden Centre. She's got all the plants. Obviously, if Mrs. Miggins is watching her, I do, do apologise. And she's going home, she's not done anything wrong. And then your shitbag comes through junction at 140 miles an hour without looking. They're the people that we've got to be aware of what they're doing. Because everyone can go fast in a straight line. That is not driving. So everyone that's got an RS3, an A45 AMG, and all these fast cars, just because you go fast in a straight line doesn't mean you can drive a car. And he was doing laps in this area, and then we'll, every time we try to get a stinger out, he come past us so quick from getting stinger out, it scares you because you you you, you, you basically your target, and you think if he hits this wall that I'm hiding behind, well the wall's gone, I'm gone. Not only that wall's gone, and the wall further on is gone. We were coming past like 100 miles an hour. Um, that were a bit of a hard thing to to suck that because I think we'd done three burglaries that night and I think we got two of the cars back but we didn't get this one back. And I think in the area we had about 10 um, traffic cars and firearms cars but we still couldn't drop on him and he made us look a bit silly really. I think it would a joint thing between him being that quick, us trying to decision make that quick and we didn't have the proper plan in place at that time and it all, all breaks down to plans which I won't go into too much. One that got away that massively, massively scared me and did scare me were a stolen RS5. Um, or were it an RS4? I want to say RS5. Um, that were picked up in Menston. And we pursued this down Hollins Hill, uh, through Bottom of Bailden, through Shipley. Now I could keep up with it at that time. I was like, I went all over him like a, you know what I mean? Rubbing his bumper up, but I was, I was quite close. So I thought, well, he's a bit shit driver, is this? He's, he's going to bin it. They're either going to bin it or they're going to they're gonna get away. Um, went up Otley Road and we turned left on Keith Road and I've never known it like it. He put his foot down and he, he, he this was the one that you can't drive, but you've got no fear. And I remember going on Keith Road. Now, Keith Road is a long, straight road, wide, and it's got some undulations in it that when you're going across... At normal speed, you won't even feel these undulations. We were coming down behind him, and I remember at one point, I think I were at 125 miles an hour in a 30 zone, and I remember the car grounding out, and my car became so unstable, it run through, and I remember him flying through, Bradford Watch said they were watching him, and he come through junction of Bottom of Park, and um, between him going through that junction and going out of my line of sight, and the person in the office clicking the button on the other camera, which is probably 500 metres away. He'd already gone through that gap. He said when it come round the corner, um, Bradford Watch said it would come round the corner like an F1, and it was just literally nearly on two wheels. He said it was so planted, but then it was just starting to crest as it went round the corner, which basically means that car is on its edge. It can't possibly go around any faster. Um, that then was a massive, massive blow of confidence because you've got to take it on the chin. You've got to say, he's, he's got away. 
uh, your officers, your fellow officers might look at you and say, well, I'd have kept up with that, all right. But you think, I've got a certain level of talent and this lad went past that. Whether he went past it because he was crazy, whether he went past it because he could drive or couldn't drive, but he's gone past my talent. And then when you put your hand up and say, I'm good, but I'm just not that good. That's all I care. So you've got to, you've got to take that on the chin. Um, and then when they go out again in the burgle and they're using that car and you think, I could have got away with that. I could have I could have put that to bed when I wanted to. That's why if we have to make tactical contact and take you off road beforehand, we will do. And the other one that got away were quite funny. We, uh, obviously there's loads, so I, I, it's just I'm batting some off. We, um, there was a burglary at the local golf club and we went to look for the burglars, so to speak, and there were no one there. We were doing this massive, massive search and we could hear this, boo, boo, boo. And then as we turned around, literally out of bushes came this, I only want to say it's like a Cushman Kubota. It's like, um, it's either electric or it's a, a, a 600 cc engine. It's like what you'd see farmers use, putting air bales in the back. You can get three people. It's like a golf car, but bigger. And it comes flying out of grass through all bushes. Uh, three lads wearing baklavas and went back going, whoa, fucking wankers, you know. Uh, yeah. And it were off. And it couldn't go more than probably 15 miles an hour. And we were sat behind it and we were laughing and we were trying to go around it. And every time we went around it, they were, and they were throwing bricks off the back of it. And then it turned left and went up Dockfield Road. And we would, it was just a joke. We would get on comms and we like, yeah, it's your Romeo 52 and behind this vehicle. What is it? I don't know. It's a golf cart. But then you'll, everyone in West Yorkshire is listening. Everyone in West Yorkshire says, Oh, have you heard the behind this? We're pursuing this car and this burglary. Oh, boot, press the button. And, yeah, it's a golf cart. It's. Uh, one five miles an hour. Sorry, Ben, did you say 15 mile an hour? Yeah, dropping out at 12 mile an hour. And you can hear everyone say, yeah, show me on it, I'm coming. And think like, if you can't catch this, you, you shit, you need to quit. But every time you're trying to go around it, it's literally, and you're not smashing your car, you're not smashing a 50,000 pound car up for a 1,000 pound golf buggy, so to speak. We just couldn't get past it. So we pursued it up this long road, and you were, it was just missing cars, they were throwing stuff out back. They were just giving us signs, you know. I think at one point one of them pulled him, pulled him in, he pulled his pants down, got his ass out. And then we got to end at road and it just zipped up and went on the side at Canal Bank. It fit enough to go on the side at Canal Bank and he's going in the distance, he's a young lad on the back of it with balaclava on. And we stopped, we're still laughing on comms, um, but we're trying to make a decision then whether we go on the side at Canal. But when you're talking about three in the morning, it's pitch black, you're taking a 50,000 pound car on the side of the Canal Bank with bushes on one side and a drop in the canal on the other. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. So I took it on the chin, and then when we got back to office, I've never heard so much piss taking in my life that people were like shouting up, have you heard Ben's like lost his golf car? It was 12 mile faster pursuit. It would it probably, if I could look back, I could have probably got out of the car and run faster and then probably jumped on back at the golf cart, give him a slap and throw him off. But I had to take it on the chin that I'd lost a golf cart and I think my kudos sort of like sank them for about three weeks before I could find another RS4 or RS6 and get back up there with 100 mile an hour pursuit. Um, but they're ones that I've got away that have been massively memorable. Um, and I'd just like to say thank you to the lad that, if he's watching, stole the golf cart. Um, it was a learning curve for me and I hope it was for you. With Lord's Patient Channel, if you want to help out, please see the link below. Thank you.